I am completely against any idea of whitening your teeth with these artificial whitening products, no matter how much marketing they have behind them, telling you they're safe. I know I have other dental peers who agree with me. I know there are lots of people out there who have been to their dentist, begged for whitening, and their dentists have said, no, I won't do it. Why do you think this is? Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. We're joined by Dr. Ellie Phillips, a leading expert in dental health. We're diving into the world of natural dental care, focusing on how to whiten your teeth and remove tartar at home using simple, effective remedies. Dr. Phillips will share expert tips on maintaining a bright, healthy smile without harsh chemicals and provide insight into preventing tartar buildup naturally. Whether you're looking to enhance your smile or improve your dental hygiene, this video has everything you need to know. Stay tuned for practical advice that works. Here's Dr. Phillips to tell us more. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. This is because artificially whitening your teeth is insane if you know anything about the biochemistry of teeth. The first way that teeth are whitened, and this was the original whitening products back in the day, they were toothpastes, they began with toothpastes. And these toothpastes were so abrasive. Now, if, if you're a smoker and you have a lot of plaque on your teeth that has stained, maybe abrasive, some kind of abrasive way to clean that stain off your teeth is necessary. But if you have perfectly fine teeth with no real plaque deposits crusted on your teeth, then you don't want to be abrading them. You will thin your enamel. I can't tell you how many young women in particular come to me with agony on, around their teeth because they have worn their enamel away by using these artificial whitening products, some of which have abraded their teeth, some of which are so acidic. And these include the white strips. If you measure the pH of a white strip, you will find that it's close to battery acid. This acidity is necessary in the whitening world because the first way that you open up a tooth to be have its color changed is by actually getting rid of the barrier, the enamel barrier, which is composed of minerals, inside a skeleton, kind of looks like a honeycomb, and this enamel skeleton packed with minerals resists acidic damage. And it can do that up to a point. When you put a crest white strip on your teeth or use these other whitening trays, you are melting all the protection off the outside of your teeth. There's a protein barrier as well, which just disappears. And then the acids percolate into the outside of the enamel. Now, the interesting thing is that the first stage of demineralization, the removal of minerals from teeth, makes teeth whiter. That's where these very clever people came up with the idea of artificially whitening teeth. You may have had braces on your teeth, and when they took them off, you had little scars, white scars, flecks across your teeth. That was where plaque had formed acids and had demineralized or weakened certain spots on your teeth where those braces, the, the little brackets of your braces had been. And that demineralized area looked whiter. And initially that demineralized area can be repaired and remineralized. That's what I talk about when we talk about how to reverse a cavity, reversing and remineralizing these porosities. And the argument given by dentists about whitening is, oh, you can reverse that damage. Maybe you can reverse some of it. The problem is that most artificial whitening products go beyond just demineralizing the outside of your teeth. And who really wants to do that? These ingredients in the whitening products actually travel through those open holes. And the next thing they attack are the proteins on the deeper side of your tooth, on the dentin side. Dentin is slightly sort of skin colored, a little bit browner than the tooth. And that's the natural color of dentin. 
When peroxide travels through the enamel channels that have been opened by the acidity, it will change and denature the proteins in dentin and that will change its color. That's how you change the internal color of a tooth artificially. Is that a problem? Well, there are very few studies, if any, in America to show that's a problem. I don't know why, it's interesting, but there are studies in other countries that say that may soften a tooth so that if you ever have a cavity, your tooth will have far less defense against the infection that's going to dive into your tooth. So you're weakening the structure of your teeth. And you may not know this for 10 to 15 years from now. So that's a problem. And that's one of the reasons I would never recommend that you whiten your teeth with a peroxide product. And then the third thing, the more clever thing now than ever, is that they are manufacturing products that not only get through the outer enamel, but when they're doing that, they change the structure of the enamel. We talked about enamel being like a skeleton structure with minerals packed inside it. And between these little crystals, there is a layer of a watery mineral layer. And this is why enamel is so interesting. And this is what makes, what we're going to talk about in a minute, what makes a tooth actually glitter and look white. It is the reflection from these little layers between the crystals, the little watery layer that bounces light off your tooth. What artificial whitening products are now doing, this is how you get that bluer, whiter than ever color, is that it is changing what's that liquid structure between the crystals. It's either drying it out, those would be the cheaper ones, and that's horrible for your enamel because it makes it very fragile and brittle, or it puts another liquid in there so that it will bounce the rays, uh, any sort of light rays off your tooth in a different way and make your teeth appear whiter. So that's how artificial whitening products work. And I hope you'll agree with me that it doesn't sound really good if you could make your teeth whiter by yourself. Before we go down that road, I want to explain what makes teeth white. Now, enamel is actually clear glass. It's not white. That was a brilliant marketing move back in the 80s. Teeth actually look white even though they're made up of clear glass crystals. And the dentin on the inside of your tooth is the more live type color that's inside. And the question of whether your teeth look darker or brighter it all depends on the strength, the mineralization of the outside casing of your tooth. You can't really change the color of your dentin. That's inside your tooth. It's just the way it is. But what we can do is make this glass more reflective, brighter, shine, and reflect and refract the rays of light as they contact our tooth and go back to the people who are looking at it. Now, there are tricks that are played, often in dental offices that are quite aggressive about selling whitening products, because under neon lights, under those artificial lighting boxes, teeth almost always look yellow. And you can look at your teeth in the bathroom mirror if you've got the wrong kind of lighting and hate the way they look. But if you take a mirror and go outside and let natural sunlight bounce on your teeth, you will see what color they really are. And that is how nature intended. And that is the way that nature has made our teeth sparkle when they're healthy, because healthy teeth are stronger teeth. Next question I know now you will ask is how do I strengthen my teeth? And basically teeth strengthen and demineralize in a very flowy way all day long. It's a dynamic process. Your teeth are neither strong nor weak. They weaken and then they strengthen. That's the way nature works. And when we eat and drink, we weaken our teeth. We de demineralize them to some degree. When we allow good, healthy saliva to put minerals back into our teeth, they will strengthen. 
So the answer really is, let's give our saliva time to interact with our teeth so that minerals from our saliva, our spit in our mouth, can go back and repair any that were lost when we ate that meal. The problem today is everybody's sipping. Nobody ever stops. Cups of coffee go on for hours. People sip sparkling water, which is actually acidic, or sodas, or energy drinks, or sports drinks. You name it, and then people nibble. And whether it's a protein bar, a date, some raisins, it doesn't matter. The sugar is feeding acid-producing bacteria. The drinks themselves can be acidic. If you don't stop completely eating and drinking, you will never stop this demineralization process. It will continue and continue and continue all day long. So it's really important to eat and drink at mealtimes. If you want to stimulate a flow of even more mineralized, even more healing saliva, xylitol, the product that I formulated, Zellies, are designed specifically so that when you eat a few mints, it will stimulate a flow of highly mineralized saliva that will go into the outside of your teeth and strengthen the enamel. And the more you do this, the more you strengthen your enamel and reduce the period of time when they're demineralized, the stronger your teeth, the smoother the surface, and the more light will bounce off the surface of your tooth and your teeth will appear brighter and whiter. For some people, this can occur in a matter of a week. It doesn't matter what age you are. That's the fun thing. We are talking now, of course, about adult teeth. I need to make sure you realize that. I mean, the process of strengthening teeth works for children, but you won't get the same change in color because baby teeth don't have the same structure. But adult teeth, even young adult teeth, like a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old that may be erupting their new front teeth and they look kind of yellowish, use these strategies. End the meal with a little bit of xylitol, and then stop eating and drinking. Try and go an hour, if possible, more. No sips of water. Every time you wash your mouth with water, you are diluting, you are thinning this healing liquid, your saliva. And I know everybody wants to drink lots and lots of water. I am with you. But do that in a session if you don't want to drink it at a mealtime, because some people believe that's bad. Find another occasion and drink more at that occasion and then stop. The damage is the continuous sipping. I did a, a Zoom call with somebody once. I think I counted 30 sips within a half hour Zoom call. That's ridiculous for your teeth. You are literally washing the minerals away. So be aware, you can drink. I'm not saying don't drink, I've been misquoted. Drink all you want, but try to limit the sessions of the eating and drinking that you have. I'm not here to limit your diet or what you eat or drink. I'm here to say, give your teeth time with undiluted saliva. And by stimulating the saliva with zellies or xylitol, you create sal stimulated saliva. Saliva that's pulled into the mouth is always at a slightly higher pH. It has a different pH and you can measure this yourself. You can buy some pH testing strips and do a, do a little experiment. Test your pH in the morning when you get out of bed. See what it is. Often a measurement for women around 6, 5.5, 6, 6.5, very disappointing often. Men are usually have more alkaline saliva. It's just the way it is, ladies. It happens. And when you're pregnant, you will have acidic saliva for nine months. That's just the way it is. Again, hormonal influences, stress. It, there are a whole bunch of factors beyond diet and sickness, drugs, everything changes the pH of your mouth. And then try having a zelly mint and like two minutes later, test the pH of your mouth. And you'll see it has raised usually at least two units for anyone who has acidic saliva. For somebody who already has alkaline saliva, it may not change that much. It's just the way it is. You are lucky people with very mineralizing saliva naturally. But for somebody who's pregnant, they're going to need that additional help. And then the final way that you can speed the whitening of your teeth or the strengthening of your teeth is to actually be aware of nurturing 
the good bacteria in your mouth, and that happens by eating xylitol. And that's one of the reasons I think last thing at night, a little xylitol, a little Zelly's mint as you go to sleep at night can be really helpful to create a coating of healthy bacteria that smooth out the surface of your teeth. They make food stick less, but they also make your teeth look shinier, look brighter, feel. You can almost feel it when you start eating xylitol. Your teeth feel smooth and shiny. And then the final thing then that you can do is use the products, the mouth rinses that I recommend in my complete mouth care system, because they will speed all of these processes. They will speed the natural building of healthy biofilm by uh, simply modulating or pushing the biofilm in a direction of health. They don't damage the bacteria in your mouth. The, all the, the, the misinformation about mouthwashes, ignore it and use yourself as an experiment. When you get your mouth healthy, your nitric oxide levels will go up, your teeth will be brighter, your mouth will be healthier, and that's the way nature really wanted it. When you smile with a shiny white smile, people on the other side know you're a healthy person to interact with. And that is really why I believe we are drawn to wanting healthy, white, shiny teeth. I embrace that. Now, one last thing, if you are having a photo session, if you are having a wedding, you really want those uber white teeth. They cannot be quickly achieved. Whitening takes time. I would say you need to give yourself between six months and two years to really see what color your teeth can become. It, children's teeth will usually whiten quicker. If you're a seven-year-old with a newly erupted tooth, by the time you're eight, that tooth will probably look spectacular. For the rest of us, give time. But if you haven't got time, what do you do? I would recommend you go to a trustworthy dentist, do what you can, strengthen your teeth as much as you can, realize that you are going to cause some damage, and do it one time. Do it for that occasion so that you feel you have that experience. It won't ruin everything. The real damage is done by people who continuously, every few months, are whitening their teeth or, or worse than that. And younger children, be really, really vigilant parents because when teeth are younger, the inside of that tooth is near the surface. And there were studies done where they whiten children's teeth teenagers, and then they took out teeth for orthodontics, for straightening the teeth. That was a planned orthodontic extractions. They did the tooth at the time of the whitening. They did the next tooth uh, a month later, and then they did two months later and three months later. And they looked at these teeth under section. And there were changes in the cells on the inside of these teeth after a substantial amount of time after the whitening. So we don't know, nobody's looking at the real damage. I don't know if that study was accurate. I just know I read about that study and I believe it's possible. Most people can feel sensitivity and pain. Those are signals, that is not good. So I'm hoping studies will be done to look at the effects on stem cells that are inside our teeth. See, we now have discovered that our teeth are reservoirs for stem cells in our body. Do you want to potentially damage those stem cells and make them travel around your body in some way that maybe is unhealthy? I'm not sure about any of those things, but I think it should be studied because so many people are ignorant about the damage done by whitening teeth and they're trusting people who have not looked deeper than the superficial. And then finally, I want to tell you a story, a very encouraging story for anyone who's older, who thinks their teeth are just that color because they drink tea or coffee or whatever. My mother, who was in her 80s, and my father had passed away a long time before, she met a young man of 70. And she, of course, put this engineer gentleman on my complete mouth care system. And for 10 years, he used my complete mouth care system very efficiently, as all engineers probably do, doing everything right. And then he went back to his dentist. He had missed dental appointments for almost 10 years. 
because he had moved to live by my mother. And when he went to the dentist, the dentist was fascinated and said, George, what happened? What have you been using to whiten your teeth? They look amazing. He had not whitened his teeth. The dentist knew there had been a change because the last thing he had done 10 years previously was create a crown at the back of George's mouth that was matched to the then yellow color of his teeth. He was 70 and between 70 and 80 years old, he had miraculously transformed his teeth, not only to be healthier, stronger, but whiter. So anyone can change the color of their teeth. It doesn't matter what age you are. This is a dynamic process and you can begin today. Now, how do you get rid of existing plaque or existing tartar? And to do that, you will need to use, I guess we have to begin by defining what is tartar. And in order to explain tartar, I have to explain what is plaque because tartar is hardened up plaque. Hi. I'm Dr. Ali Phillips and I'm here to help you avoid unnecessary dental treatments. And one of the treatments that a lot of people succumb to is quite painful and often protracted long appointments to scrape calculus or otherwise called tartar off their teeth. And I'm here to help you figure out how you can avoid having that treatment done either as frequently or perhaps altogether. And the suggestion I will make straight away is that you begin using xylitol. The use of xylitol is going to limit the formation of plaque. Plaque is an infected material that blows up or expands what is normally a thin film covering your teeth. Have you ever heard of people talk of the skin of your teeth? People used to think that was a funny thing to say, but there is a very thin film that is supposed to be covering your entire mouth. And that film is biofilm. It's made of bacteria wrapped in a protein and it forms this mesh that is protective. And this mesh, when it's healthy, resists the formation of plaque and resists the formation of tartar. So we want to develop healthy biofilm. That's the first thing that you want to do if you have plaque, tartar, or calculus forming. And xylitol is going to help you do that. You need to have one or two mints, like a Zelly's mint, at the end of every meal, after every snack, after every drink. Try to eat and drink in sessions, and then don't eat or drink for an hour or two afterwards. During that time when you're not eating and drinking, you will be forming this healthy biofilm, which is what you need. The other thing you can do is use my complete mouth care system. It works in synergy with the xylitol. They work harmoniously together, increasing the effect both of the xylitol and also of the, the complete mouth care system. Your teeth will be smoother. They'll be feel shinier and more slippery and they will be stronger and they will resist the formation of this tartar, this calculus. It takes six months approximately for most people who have a mouth where they're developing tartar and plaque to get to the point where they're not developing it anymore. So it's not an overnight thing. Some people it will work more quickly than others and that depends on a whole bunch of other things called risk factors. I'm not going to go into those right now, but take it from me that it, you got to be patient, but you got to keep doing this. And if you do this for six months, mark it on a calendar, mark it on a diary and, and see the points at which your teeth begin to feel better almost within a week or so. And then you'll start seeing less plaque forming by the end of six months, it will be virtually not forming anymore. Now, how do you get rid of existing plaque or existing calculus or existing tartar? That's another issue. And to do that, you will need to use my complete mouth care system twice a day, at least twice a day, not more though than three times a day, never ever more than three times. But if you use it twice a day, and if you feel that it's 
feeling good using it three times a day, you can. And I'm not going to go through my whole mouth care system now. We've got lots of videos. I've got my website, drellie.com, where you can see, download a booklet, see exactly what this system is all about. Part of the system, the middle part, is the use of Listerine. And the Listerine that I choose to send people when they purchase a kit, and the one I recommend you begin using first, is Listerine Cool Mint. But if you are trying to get rid of stubborn, subjugable, that means under the gum, tartar or calculus, or even over the gum, tartar or calculus, you may want to switch out the Cool Mint for the original. For some reason, and I have my own theories on why this might be, but I don't know for sure, but the original Listerine is able to loosen and get rid of the subgingival and supergingival, the above the gum dental plaque, and listen to me carefully here, when it is used as part of my complete mouth care system. Do not ever use Listerine on its own, anyone in my opinion. Because when you use Listerine on its own, you are leaving it in your mouth and it is acidic. The, the pH of Listerine is about 4.2. It is great when it is part of my complete mouth care system. It is part of the equation that's going to work. But if you decide you are doing some extra dissolving of your calculus or something, you are not because it is acidity that grows plaque. It is acidity that causes the formation of calculus and tartar. It may be acidity because you have acid reflux. It may be acidity because you're drinking Coca-Cola or soda or sparkling waters. You have to get the acidity of your mouth under control. Xylitol is the way to do that. And then to dissolve the existing problems out of your mouth, the calculus and the tartar, use my complete mouth care system and you may want to substitute the cool mint switch it out and use the original listerine and and just see what the changes occur and then you can go back to your dental appointment usually six months nine months later and you may be amazed you may have a lot less to do and maybe maybe there's nothing to do next watch the dr ellie phillips club playlist for more information on more dental health Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments. Your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.